Okay, welcome, John, and uh, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Derek. Um, I'm not sure uh, who was not a part of the training last weekend, uh, sorry, last week uh, on Thursday, but I covered some really in-depth um, knowledge and training. And uh, what I would suggest that is we can only take away from this what we put in. So I'm a big note taker. And you know yourself, mm -hmm. we can never, ever remember all the things we can maybe in the first, you know, half an hour or an hour, but then it fades away and then mm -hmm. it's lost. And, and this is sort of, this is real in-depth stuff that we just don't get generally. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the training with a recap on what we've done last week. And it'll also be maybe new information for the people who weren't in attendance last week. Uh, and then I'm going to go into a subject uh, that uh, will confuse you, but um, I will, it will make sense once I fold, unfold it. Last week, we spoke about, uh, because everybody, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a phrase that's thrown a lot, around a lot. You know, you get into like uh, direct sales, network marketing, MLM, whatever you want to call it, uh, and everybody talks about this thing called the reason why, you know, it needs to make you cry and you have to have this compelling reason. But we think it's just sort of, you know, one of these things that I mentioned, but it's actually not because the foundation, not just in what we are doing, but it's the foundation in any field of success. If we don't have a reason to do whatever it is we're doing, then we'll only just do enough to get the job done. And, and that's just clearly not enough. That's almost like a job. So let's, let me just dwell on that for a little bit, the reason why, and I'll break this down in a minute, but what, why, you know, ask yourself the question, don't, you know, don't have to answer it here, but ask yourself the question, why is it your, why did you join Vivo and Persona? You know, there must, you know, let me just break that down even further, actually, because we have two kinds of um, motivators. Now, when we talk about the reason why, there's two things that will move a person in a forward direction, and we call that extrinsic and intrinsic motivators. Now, in extrinsic motivators are basically things where we as people would expect some sort of a reward in return. Now, it may be, it's usually always an immaterial thing. It might be money, it might be a car, it might be, you know, financial freedom, paying off your debts, buying a house, paying off the house, whatever. But it's an in extrinsic reason. It's a reward that we expect to receive should we build this business and become successful. But extrinsic motivators, as you've probably experienced in the past, they will get you moving for sure. You know, it's great. It's exciting. We come across the comp plan. We see the uh, rewards calculator. We see all these figures. And we think, oh, my God, you know, if we could make this happen or if you could make this happen, then that would be amazing. I could do this and I could do that. And we get excited initially on that extrinsically about the things that we can actually do. But how many people, whether it be this business or any other endeavor that we've in, uh, engaged ourselves in, have found that that is short-lived two or three days later, that euphoria is gone, and we're sort of back to where we were to start off with. And quite often, we don't ask ourselves this question, but if we do ask ourselves this question, why is that? Because true motivation, and if you break motivation down, it comes from motive, reason why, some sort of you know reason why we should move ourselves in a particular uh, direction but the thing that keeps us going is intrinsically it comes from within now i've made some notes here and what we discussed in the training last week were five components now if you can just imagine that if you were to um, draw yourself a chart on the left hand side right you know zero to ten and along the bottom write these five components. Now, I'll break them down. The first one is mastery. They're not in any particular order, but these are the five things that you definitely need, five components that you need to bring up, ramp up to really sort of be consistent and get into flow every single day. And the first one is mastery. Uh, what I've written about mastery is the pursuit of excellence and continuous improvement. Without mastery, you're only get enough to get the job done. Having, have you identified the key or the core skills that are required to be effective in what it is we do? Now, the core skills in, in this business or any other kind of direct sales business is that we, first of all, have to connect with people. That's a skill. We have to have that conversation with people. That's a skill. We have to invite them to take a look at whatever it is we're doing, in this case, Vivo in persona. We have to follow up with them. That's a skill. We have to, where applicable, 
get people started and onboard them. That's a skill. So they're the, the core skills. And of course, you know, you know, mentoring, et cetera, et cetera. But they are the main core skills that we need to master this business. Now, the other one is uh, is called autotelicity. You know, you may have heard that before, you may not. But this is um, in doing what you love and feel that it's the most important thing that you're doing. And we have other important things as well, of course. You know, we have our jobs or our, or our businesses or, you know, household and hobbies and all that sort of stuff. But in terms of this business, it's it's really loving. It's having that passion about what we're doing and feeling it's the most important thing that we could be doing at that particular time. How many times, as an example, you may have only been involved with this a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks. In my case, it's four weeks. But how, how many times have you found yourself spontaneously just sitting down and doing something to do, you know, one of the core skills that it is involved to build this business. That's all to I'm not going to ponder on this too long because we covered it last week. Um, purpose. Now, this is so important and that's that sort of spills into the reason why. Purpose is what you impact. Now, the reason why it might be something material, it might be non-material, but when your goal becomes bigger than material things, money. It is much bigger. I'll give an example. Years ago, I was very, very, you know, I thought all oh, this money I could be, uh, I, I become really materialistic. I wanted all these cars and the villa and, you know, flying a private jet and all this sort of stuff. But I found that that was short-lived. And I remember listening to a seminar by uh, Anthony Robbins, who's, you know, has a wealth of wisdom and experience. And he said, and this is what sort of set me off on a different tra trajectory, he said, whatever it is you're pursuing in life needs to be bigger than money. Now, that got me thinking. I thought, well, okay, well, how would that look for me? I mean, what could be possibly bigger than money? And then I started to discover other truths about life. And I started to get curious about what that was. And today, I am, you know, the money's great, don't get me wrong, but I'm not motivated by money. It's the it's the bigger things in life. It's the having a, making an impact leaving a legacy, making a difference, all of these different components that are bigger than money. And by the way, the money is a result. The money will follow. But if that's what motivates you, you'll probably find that you'll get frustrated because if money's a result, then clearly something has to happen before the money comes into your life. So that's your purpose. I mean, take uh, people like um, Gandhi, Mother Teresa. No, I don't expect us to be make an impact like they did, but these are people that had a, a compelling purpose in their lives to make something really extraordinary happen. Autonomy is what you choose. It's the feeling of ownership. You know, in our jobs, we don't we generally don't get the choice of what it is we do. Our boss tells us this is your job. We know our job and we do that, but it may not always be our choice. We may get the choice of being able to do our job in a specific way, but we don't have the choice of actually doing what it is we really want to do because it's our job. That's what we do. And the first, the last one is curiosity. Now, this is a big one. I, I am a naturally curious person. You know, like as an example, when I got involved with Vivo and Persona, um, I automatically looked into the app. I went onto the Vivo website, the Impersona website, you know, the We Are uh, Vgen uh, website. I went all over the place, clicked all over the place. I just wanted to, to, you know, to really root out that information and know what it was. Not, you know, to tell other, I mean, you can tell and share the experience with other people, but I just wanted to know for myself because I'm a naturally curious person. But curiosity, but here's the thing is, how many times over the last however long you've been in, a couple of days, a couple of weeks uh, or, or longer, how many times over the last weeks have you sought content relating to Vivo in persona, as I've just alluded to, uh, to boost your curiosity? There's two things that you need. You need leverage from learning and you need uh, immediate feedback. What do you mean by that? Now, if you, uh, as an example, um, in one of the core skills, learn a specific method and how we reach out to people, you try that first, you get a result, and that's your immediate uh, feedback. You think, okay, well, that works, or it didn't work. So you can test and adjust as you go along. And then you just keep doing that. You keep trying something, you get the immediate feedback. Is it working? Fantastic. Do it better, do it more effective. And then it just gets better and better. So that then spills over into mastery. It all works in between each other. So just let me re recap on that. You've got mastery, autotelicity, purpose, 
autonomy and curiosity. There's the five components, sorry, five components, um, almost couldn't count now, <laughs> uh, five components that you need that if you were to take the chart, as I said, you know, on the left-hand side, you've got zero to 10. On the bottom, you've got your five components. Now, be honest with yourself. Is do Where are you right now? So the way to improve this is to really take stock of where you are right now in your mastery, autotelicity, purpose, autonomy, and curiosity. Where am I? Where are you right now? And then you can see, when you see that chart, you can see you'll probably be strong in maybe two or three of those areas, but I'll almost guarantee you you're probably weaker in one or two, maybe three of those areas. And these are the areas that you can identify that you need to approve upon to bring that up. And when you get to that level, that's when magical things start happening. Because here's the thing, is when you feel yourself knowing or, or th there's things that you want to do, you know that you're supposed to do them, but you find yourself not doing them. It's because there's something missing in one of those five things that stops you because quite often we don't want to do what we don't know. So we then therefore usually always sort of stand back from it. But when we improve those, one of all of these five areas, we'll find ourselves getting into flow and we'll just, it would be a natural occurrence to just sit down and do what we know we should be doing and doing that with passion as well. So that's just a quick uh, recap on what we talked about last week. Uh, you know, if anybody's got any questions on this, feel free to answer, uh, ask the questions at the end. But what I, what I want to specifically talk about is I'm going to talk to you this evening about laying bricks. <laughs> Hold on a minute, John. Uh, are we in the right meeting here? I mean, I thought we'd come along to do some training to learn about the business. Why would we want to lay, learn about laying bricks? You know, that's what bricklayers do. It will make sense when I go through this. Now, laying bricks. Now, we have this business opportunity. There's many sort of moving parts in here. When we see the um, presentation being presented, it sort of seems overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Now, we just spoke about our responsibility and the areas that we need to um, engage in and perform each and every day to build our business. Let's just call that building bricks. But there's other things going on as well. There's other things like the company have talked about introducing different companies. Uh, they've talked about Garmin. They've talked about Fitbit. They've talked about all these other companies that are coming board. Now, just imagine that we are building a house. We're constructing a house. And we, in this meeting here, we are bricklayers. Our, our job is to lay bricks. That's it. Now, if you think about this, if you were a bricklayer, just sort of, you know, indulge with me here. If you were a bricklayer on a, a building site, then, you know, clearly your job is to lay bricks. But you've also got on site, you've got a plumber. You've also got an electrician. You've also got a surveyor. You've also got the uh, person who um, does the planning over here. You've also got somebody over here. You've got many people on the building site, but our job is to lay bricks. But what we tend to do or what we sometimes find ourselves doing is that we're looking at what the plumber's doing. You know, the plumber's doing his plumbing thing. And let me translate that into what that it makes more sense is that we've got sometimes the app doesn't work like it should work. But remember, this is technology. It's fairly, it's not in its early stages, but there's some testing and adjusting needs to happen here. So just trust that the company are taking care of that. But also got things that don't work like, or we're unsure about, like, you know, how do you uh, reset this? Or I've done this measurement and it doesn't seem to be working. And I see a lot of, you know, questions going into the chat. Now that's good, but if we were curious, and started looking for the information ourselves and just thinking laterally, well, how could this be? Then we'd probably find the answers for ourselves. So you've got the compensation plan or the business presentation over here. So you've got Peter and Graham taking care of that. Let's call them the, um, um, you know, roof, uh, whatever, roofer, the guy that does the roof there on a building. So you have to excuse me, I speak German all the time, so we don't call it roofer in German. Um, so you've got the guy that build the roof, you've got the plumber over here, you've got the electrician over here. But what we tend to do is we tend to sort of dilute our focus and wonder what's going on, on over here. The plumber, he's doing his thing. The electrician over here, that's Derek, you know, that's uh, Graham and Peter. And you've got the company over here, that might be the guy building the roof. That will take care of itself. But our job is to lay bricks. And when I say lay bricks, translated, 
that basically means our core skills, making connections, having conversations, inviting them to ever take a look at what we're doing, following up, getting started and onboarding and then making sure that they're in the system, they're added to the Telegram groups, they're added to the WhatsApp groups and any other information that these people need to really be in that position to self-educate. We, Of course, we can ask questions that that's natural, but we need to narrow that down to our singular focus in laying bricks that's building our business. And what we'll find is that we won't get distracted by what's going on. That's Other people have taken care of that. We take care of our own job, and that's laying bricks. Did that make sense? Just give me some yeah. feedback. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, definitely. No, that's that's good to, to hear that. And it's also good to refresh what you talked about last week. I'm just going to share, before I actually, in closing here, I'm just going to share a personal success story, which will incorporate these five components that we just talked about. <clears throat> Up until June last year, um, well, it was actually about April last year. Up until, well, in fact, June last year, I was actually employed by a company that I'm probably, I'm sure that most people have heard of as DHL here in Germany. Now, it's not DHL packaging. There's a DHL in Germany that take care of all the cabling and hardware for Deutsche Telekom. It's just a specific area of DHL that does all that telecom stuff. I was working outside. I was a forklift driver. Now, the reason I was a forklift driver is because in Germany, now remember, I, I spent uh, 29 years in the military. You know, I was a diver, you know, been a chauffeur, I've been in security, had a conventional business, all that sort of stuff. But in Germany, very much like the States or probably other countries for that matter, if you come into the marketplace with qualifications or experience that are not in German or in Germany, then you've got no qualifications or experience. So I was basically narrowed down to the, th the thing that's universal, and that was my driver's license. So mm -hmm. I couldn't really do much because I just don't have the German qualifications. But I was hungry, and I was prepared to do whatever it took. So I took that job on for two reasons. Uh, it's six minutes from where I live, so I could walk there or take my push bike, um, and it paid the bills. You know, that was it, but I was hungry. And then about April time last year, now talk about the law of attraction, just bear with me here. Um, during the pandemic, I was walking to a shop and I saw this lady drop something. It looked like her mask. And I said, excuse me, you've dropped your mask. And she looked, she says, no, it's not my mask. I've got mine in my pocket. Anyway, we got into a very, very short conversation. And then we just parted our ways. She went to the same shop as me. She went that way. I went this way. We met again um, and had a conversation, a much deeper conversation. Now, this person was a, a doctor. Um, but she was transitioning into online businesses. And I mentioned, look, you know, I've got this online business, not this, it was something else at the time. And she goes, oh, wow, that's crazy. You know, I'm looking to start something online. Give me a telephone number. We have to have a conversation. Anyway, we had a conversation. One thing led to another. And she says, I know somebody who would be interested in what you're doing. And she introduced me to this other person. So we met this other person, or I met this other person. We had a conversation and he mentioned he was in solar, re renewable energy. And I thought, oh, wow. Now, I have got no clue about renewable energy. I have got no experience. I've got no knowledge. I've got no nothing. But I saw it as an opportunity. And I said, well, can, you know, can I get involved? Can, we, can, can I get in? And he goes, yeah, you can. So that's what got me into renewable energy. I had zero experience, zero knowledge, nothing, no training, no nothing. And they said to me, get me land. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how to do that, but I just, my aptitude and attitude just set me on that path. And I've done actually very well with that. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because it was a journey. It was a process. Now I'm going to share a picture with you. Now this was talking about all the components that I just discussed, the mastery, autolicity, uh, purpose, autonomy, and curiosity. I'm going to share a picture with you. Now being ex-military, I hate disorganized spaces i just that just it's just a thing a military thing i don't know but i just I, I can't do it and when i started at dhl it was a shambles and when i started there now remember i'm starting as a job as a normal employee like everybody else just sort of you know doing as little as possible to get the job done i'm like this needs to be sorted now when i came in this is not my job i'm going to share a picture with you just to ex just to sort of illustrate these um, components being put into um, practice. 
So I'm just going to share my scene, uh, screen very uh, briefly. Where is it going here? So if I just uh, share this, can you see that picture? Yep. Okay, this, imagine it was a complete mess. Now these things weigh quite a bit, by the way. Um, it was a complete mess. Now what, that took me a day to do, but when it was finished, this was what it looked like. Now you can imagine, you can imagine my boss and everybody else, I'll just stop sharing screen there. My boss and everybody else going, who the hell is this guy? What is he doing? But I, you know, I'm just saying, that's not my job. I don't get paid to do that, but I just do that. And what I'm saying is, is that, you know, this is like, I had a purpose because I was on a journey. Mastery, touching everything with 100%. I done it automatically. Nobody told me to do that. I just done it in between my main job that I was getting paid for. If I had a window of opportunity, I'd go and do stuff like that. And it's like this business. When you come into this business with that mindset, then magical things start to happen. And you understand these five components I talked about. But finally, the success story continued very briefly. Um, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, I was actually approached on LinkedIn because on my LinkedIn profile, um, as my job, it says land acquisition manager, because that's why I am. Um, I was approached by four individuals saying, look, we're looking for, uh, we're looking to um, employ uh, land acquisition managers in Germany. <clears throat> there is a multi-billion, one of the top companies in the world in the renewal, re, renewable energy space that were interested in my um, CV because, you know, ex, ex-military, ex-diver, ex-chauffeur, ex-security, all that kind of stuff. You don't come across those sort of CVs very often. So anyway, I got an interview and with the manager director of the company. That went very well. I got an interview with the manager director of the uh, business development part of the company that went very well and I've got another interview face-to-face -face interview on Monday which I'm sure it'll go very well don't be too confident but it will go very well and uh, then I'll, you know I should get the job after that now that it's incredible money company car all that kind of stuff but the point is I was curious and I was had a purpose. You see, these are these two components and the five that we spoke about. Now, let me just translate that into what we're doing right now. When you when you develop a passion and you're looking, because it starts with purpose. I had a purpose, I had a high purpose, and I was on this journey. These things came into my life. I saw the opportunity. People say you were lucky. My interpretation of luck is preparation meets opportunity. This business is the business. This business, the Vivo and Persona business, did not come into your life by some fluke of luck. It was supposed to come into your life at this time. Now, sometimes we don't believe that, but that's just how the the quantum field works. It brings stuff into your life at the right time when we're ready to pursue that path. Because there was something that we've been putting into the universe that's brought this opportunity to our lives. So when we understand all of that and we apply all of that, we will get results. So there you go. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Very Thank good. you, John. Yeah, that was really, really good. Did you want to say something, Phil? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, no, I just wanted to um, give you an update, really, uh, on every, everybody, on what I've uh, seen uh, with regard to the, the watch. And okay. um, I'm fortunate in that I'm able to um, use technologies which are not generally uh, available to anybody because I haven't told anybody yet. So, um, but for example, one of the reasons, and I think I mentioned this to you um, when I first uh, came to the meeting, my interest in health and, and water in particular, um, I uh, have been uh, expound, exp expounding the benefits of water for 30 years. And That's what we meant. You there said are... that the last time and I was intrigued. Right. <laughs> right. OK. I knew I'd seen you before. Yeah. yeah. So there, uh, the properties of water are so profound and there are only a handful of people on this face of this planet that understand the power and the, the ability of water to transmit energy directly into somebody's body and instantly change their physical uh, capabilities and mental capabilities. And that's all now scientifically proven. 
And not only that, it's demonstrable as well. Uh, uh, to give you an example, I can energize everybody's water on this call tonight and they would just put a drop on their on their body and they would instantly become more balanced, more stable and stronger. And that might seem quite impossible, but it but it's not. Now, um, one of the things that I uh, was keen about the watch that, that caught my attention, of course, because it was said that it measured intracellular water, extracellular water, total body water, et cetera, et cetera. So immediately I wanted to uh, to test it. And um, I think this is very interesting because I was using a different, a, a couple of different um, tests. One was I was looking at my brain health and the other I was looking at the intracellular water. Um, now, I'm, I, and which was said that could be measured on the watch. Uh, my brain health, I, I do that with another device. Um, so what I did, I dehydrated myself for two days. I didn't drink any water um, I or any liquids at all. And I looked at the results on, on the watch, on my phone. And sure enough, my uh, the indicators were uh, that I was dehydrated. So that was quite uh, interesting that it had come up with that result because that's the result that I expected. Uh, my brain health uh, gave a reading of you, you might wonder after this if I've even got a brain, but I have, I think. Um, so my brain health was 61%, which was not uh, not particularly good, uh, especially for me. And um, And so after two days, I actually drank exactly two and a half liters of my own energized water which is water that i've i've energized using uh, a, a technology that i have um and so i then uh that evening i did that during the day and in the evening i looked at my intracellular water result and absolutely blown away because uh the reading and I think it was, it says um, something like uh, the normal average is 54%, uh, I think it was. Um, I was actually at 76%. Now, um, so that's a before and after and validated by the measurement on the watch. So I'm very, very excited uh, about that. Uh, my brain health actually went also from 61% to 100% which demonstrates the importance of the, uh, of hydrating your body uh, particularly your brain because you lose well all your you lose all your functionality uh, decreases when you're dehydrated and in fact uh, i'd go so far as to say dehydration is actually one of the root causes of most chronic disease conditions because your body just doesn't function optimally so i'm very excited um i looked also um because I was initially over 25 years ago, I launched the uh, the world's first um, system that I could uh, portably and non-invasively measure uh, and calculate uh, how stiff or flexible your arteries are. And this is known as uh, aortic pulse wave velocity. Uh, I've, I've tested over 30,000 individuals all over the world for, for their arterial compliance. And um, I think uh, there was a 17th century doctor, uh, Thomas Sydenham, who said, uh, we are as old as our arteries. And of course, the problem is, as we get older, most people's arteries become uh, stiffer, not because of cholesterol, that's a, that's a myth, um, it's because of uh, a process of, uh, called glycation. It's a cross-link. I won't get too much scientific here, but it's a cross-linking of molecules, that uh, protein molecules, and it, it destroys your eyesight, your brains, and and stiffens your arteries. So, um, and my arteries, <laughs> when it, what got me into this, uh, I was in my early fifties or late forties. Um, but I used to run a very, very major Japanese telecommunications company when I was young and um, global operation. And the Japanese drink whiskey, a lot, a lot of whiskey. <laughs> and uh, um, if they did it, I did it better. Uh, and so after um, 
slogging around the whole of the world drinking whiskey with Jap my Japanese uh, partners, I um, I actually my health wasn't particularly well at all. I, I didn't become an alcoholic, thank goodness, but my my kidneys weren't functioning properly, my my uh, liver wasn't functioning properly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I read a book uh, called Your Body's Many Cries for Water, and I I thought, well, I better try. It was a good book, and the doctor that wrote that became a good friend of mine. Uh, Dr. Batman Gellidge, and um, I decided that I would start drinking water. And that was my journey um, uh, to really now understanding um, disease conditions in the body. And there's no need at all to have any disease condition because nature has the answer to everything if, if we only knew it. So I'm just about to uh, finish a book um, which uh, shows what you can do with water and with natural substances it's quite amazing i'm 75 my cardiovascular system uh works as a 35 year old uh, up and down a little bit um my brain health is 100 percent. my blood is absolutely perfect etc 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 so i've got to an age of 75 where a lot of people are walking with sticks they're in hospital with an issue etc uh, etc et so I want to show people um, basically how to, they can live longer and healthier. Uh, and I think all of these um, uh, devices, uh, and that's why I'm excited about the watch, uh, will will help because people like to, they, they don't know what's going on inside their bodies. So if we can non-invasively and very quickly give them scientifically valid information and actually demonstrate the effect of water and i can do this as i say i can do this remotely believe it or not and i've done it all over the world just from my own home uh change people's lives instantly they go absolutely nuts because they've never seen anything like it before and of course they will benefit from it so i'm also looking at other parameters that the watch is um uh, is indicating and um which i'll tell you as we go along and i get more and more information it's quite complex because there's a lot of areas that the watch covers, but I'm very impressed with it. Uh, I think it's going to make a great tool. And I think that when people understand um, that they need to, to develop good habits and get rid of the bad habits, which is what causes our, us to be ill, and good habits, which um, people don't have generally, like drinking water uh, that is that is energized. Um, so anyway, it's a long story, but um, thanks for letting me uh, say that, because I think the watch is going to go hand in glove with a lot of what I'm doing. And I'm happy to share that information with everybody who, who has a watch, because um, it will help them as well in in, in promoting the uh, benefits of wearing the watch. So there yeah, we go. That's, that's really good. And um, yeah, I remember when we first talked, but you asked me all the questions about the water and everything else. And yeah. it was interesting. And I'm glad you've been able to come back with uh, with us with so much information now more scientific than anything else and and it's actually proving to be quite valuable and uh i think most people know that i didn't join this for the money i joined for the health reasons for the health monitoring purposes mm. and in fact today i was talking with a doctor to one of his new people and again you know saying look you know do you realize how many people are actually having heart attacks every every week every month mm. even in the last couple of weeks i've had people on my contact lists within LinkedIn and Facebook going to hospital for heart problems. Mm -hmm. so, I'm afraid yeah. I'm afraid that's uh, 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 I, I won't get into uh, theories, but uh, there is a reason for that. Um, and it's not good. Uh, yeah. But my um, one of my partners is um, one of the world's leading cardiovascular experts, Dr. Dorian mm -hmm. Dugmore. And um, we do lots of uh, uh corporate work um uh, particularly around your your heart and um uh you know and people uh, and but again you know it's this water business the water that we're drinking today wherever mm -hmm. what whatever water source you have today is now not hydrating our bodies any longer and it's a big problem and the reason is is because we we're not living in a natural world we're living in a world where we are exposing ourselves to 
radiation, electromagnetic frequencies from all the devices. We're sitting right in front of our computer. We've got our mobile phone. We've got Wi-Fi. We, we, we've got electrical systems. They are producing frequencies which are interfering with our own body's natural frequencies. And because water is able to absorb information from frequencies, it's absorbing the electromagnetic frequencies. It's breaking the natural cluster of water. And now water is not entering our cells efficiently any longer. When that happens, your cytoplasm, which protects all our organelles and, and mitochondria uh, in our in our uh, every cell in our body, is, is not able to optimize our energy production any longer because there's not enough good water get, getting into our cellular structure. So that little measurement on the watch, as far as I'm concerned, is absolutely crucial that crucial. everybody understands Definitely. that if they want to live a long, healthy life, they have to drink water that is properly structured, that is energized, and that will uh, hydrate their body eff efficiently. Um, and, and we can do that now. And there's, and I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but there's nobody in the world that can actually do that. As, well, as maybe, do. maybe next week, Bill, we can actually do that with you remotely if you want. Um, yes, what, what, I, what I would suggest, time, it's, yeah. it's very simple. Mm -hmm. What everybody needs to do, though, you need to have a partner <clears throat> with you, somebody with you, okay? Mm -hmm. All you need to do is get a little glass of water, say uh, 200 mil of water. All right. Doesn't matter. Well, I say it doesn't matter if you if you if you have to use tap water or bottled water, then do it. You know, I mean, any any, any water will will do. Personally, I I don't like any water other than, than good water. Uh, that's a topic for another day. And what what I will do is um, and it takes 40 seconds. That's all. Okay. So. What you do with your partner, you do what we call a little balance and stability test, which is very simple. I'll do a little video that everybody can look at so you can see what to do. But basically what you do is you get your partner just to stand and, and imagine you're not hypnotizing them. They've got to imagine that they're cemented to the floor and you can't and they can't be moved. And then what you do, you test their lateral movement, which is the sideways movement, uh, the dynamic movement backwards and forwards, and then another, another little uh, backwards movement. And it's even if you've got a very strong person, I, I do this with a lot of athletes, mm -hmm. bodybuilders and weightlifters and what have you. Uh, and it doesn't matter how big they are. There's one little balance test, which they all fail. So you do that uh, very simply. You do it gently. And so people realize it doesn't take much effort for you to unbalance them. And you then put literally a drop of water, one little drop of water on their head, on the top of their uh, bottom of their neck, on their uh, abdomen, uh, and, and instantly you will not move that person. They are so strong. And um, uh, if, I'm, if I'm down the gym, um, everybody goes, oh, my God, because... I will I will spray all the athletes or the you know the personal trainers down at the gym, and every one of them, my local gym has beaten their best efforts, their their best results, just with four drops of water. And um, I, I'm working with the FA at the moment, and also uh, the cricket, um, uh, the world of cricket, uh, for their cricketers, because again, a little drop of the water. You can bowl faster. You can hit the ball harder. Uh, so every sport. I'm also working with a, a champion boxer, um, and my goodness me, the, just couldn't believe it. Just I hit. He hit the pad. I've, I've got this device which measures the power of the punch. Hit the pad. Fantastic. Uh, very much. Very powerful young man. Uh, sprayed it. Sprayed him with the water, and he nearly broke the blink and thing. He hit it so hard. So it's a lot of fun. Um, you won't believe what 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 you do what what happens but here's the whole point is you just imagine then that you drink that water every day your life changes change my life and it's going to change everybody else's so my passion is to teach the world believe i know it's a big statement but i'm going to do it uh the need to drink proper water every day and if if you want to see me in um, <laughs> in action so we say if you look up Richard Vobes, V-O-B-E-S, on YouTube, <clears throat> Richard Vobes, and you 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 look for magic water, and I I do a demonstration 
um, uh, with water, with Richard Vobes, and um, I got over 31,500 views and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of emails, which I'm still, I'm still working my way through now uh, because I do something on there that no one's ever seen before. So uh, all exciting. And you'll also see me do uh, a balance and stability test on Richard. So you, you'll be able to see what you need to do uh, with your partner when you come. If you if you can't get a partner, it doesn't matter. I will energize your water anyway, and you can use it on somebody a bit later. If you... uh, just to refresh everyone, if you if you come with your partner next week with mm -hmm. about 200 mils of water, do you yep. say? Yeah. And you'll be able to energize our water for us? Yeah, wherever uh, you are. Bring guests as well, bring your other team members. Uh, yeah. John, you wanted to ask a question. Sorry, I've taken up a lot of time. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, no, that's Sorry. fine. I, well, I do remember you mentioned this last time. That did intrigue me because, you know, I'm always, like, curious. You know, I'm always hungry for information on stuff that will benefit me, my health, sure. my well-being, or anything else. But two things. On my device, the one particular area that is on zero right. is ECW, extracellular water. Yeah. Yes. So does that relate to yes. what you just alluded yes. to? Yes. Um. It's again, it's down to the fact that it doesn't matter how much water we're drinking, that it is not being properly absorbed into the cellular structure of the body. So you get an excess of um, extra body water, extra cellular water, and you get um, dehydration at cellular level. So when you try um, the test on, on with the watch, um, generally, I would be absolutely surprised if anybody, and this is how bad the situation is, is anybody gets a uh, a, a good result because they can't because the water is not being absorbed properly. So um, when you start drinking uh, energized water, what 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 happens? These electromagnetic frequencies are energy. Everything is about energy. So the water, uh, I use a uh, certain frequencies which i've programmed in using the light on my phone would you believe to uh to the light carries um information in the form of frequencies photons and those photons then uh, that frequency is absorbed into the water that you will have your water in front of you will absorb <laughs> from the light that i'm going to shine in my camera to to your uh computer the water absorbs that information and the fact is that because the energy in that water is greater than the electromagnetic frequencies that are generated, uh, their frequencies are weaker. So what happens is immediately you actually uh, neutralize the effect of electromagnetic frequencies. And what people don't realize at all is that the just one of the effects is that these electromagnetic frequencies are uh, um, uh, making us lose our own uh, innate energy and power. So the reason that when you've been sprayed with a little bit of water, so much energy is absorbed directly into that body, which is greater than the uh, en energy from the electromagnetic frequencies from outside. And that's why instantly you become stronger. You actually have already got that strength in your body, but you don't mm -hmm. realize it because we're all living in this in this super frequencies and we all think it's normal. So when you, that's why you'll get such a huge surprise when you realize the true capabilities of the human body where with without the interference of these electromagnetic frequencies. It's really, really interesting and exciting stuff because it's not a good thing. And um, I'm working on ways that we can protect ourselves from these electromagnetic frequencies. Good, 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 good. That's but good to hear. Just, just, uh, I just have one other, well, actually, it's a, it's a dual question, but it's one question. Sure. Is, um, um, rather than having to wait till next week, which, because yeah. I, like, you know, this this is this is exciting stuff, is that, um, do, would, is there any way of doing this energizing the water ourselves? No. No, okay, not, that's okay. well. well that's I'm sorry, that, sorry. Let me let me uh, let me put it this way to you. Um, the answer to that, sorry, is not no. <laughs> it's yes, you can. Um, and what uh, what that would involve is that um, you purchase uh, the download software 
uh, that you run on your phone. Um, but before we get to that, um, and it's not expensive, I wanted to keep it you know, applicable for as many people as possible to benefit from this. Um, but um, we have made a substantial investment, so we need to get a little bit of it back. Um, but but what, what I was going to say is wait until if you... <laughs> I, I like your attitude, John, because, yeah, I'd like to do it straight away as well. But um, I, I'd like to, to do it all together, if you don't mind. It'll be much sure. more fun. Uh, and uh, and it's only a week away, and um, I'm going to think of another few tricks that we can we can look at when when we're all on on looking at the watch. I'm going to do some work with more work with the watch, which I can demonstrate um, next week as well. So um, yeah. yeah, just no, bear that, with that'll me. be good. And as you said, we don't want to take too long on this presentation, no. so otherwise people no. stop coming. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll add that to next week's uh, presentation, Phil. Super, uh, thank which you. Which will be really good for everyone to know about. And uh, it's it's purely up to people what they want to do, et cetera. But at least if they have the knowledge, that's something. Just a quick question before Angie asks her question. Somebody told me a while ago that they were concerned about wearing the watch because of its electromagnetic yes. fields yep. and that sort yep. of thing. Yep. What is your take on that? Right. Well, unfortunately, they are right. Um, okay. All of these watches, they do emit um, radiation. Um, uh, but it, it's very, very minimal. Right. Um, but 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 re certain radiations are 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 actually stored um, in the in the fat in the body and the bones in the body. So mm -hmm. long term, it's 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 not a good thing really. Having said that, the answer, believe it or not, is drinking the water because that right. then will okay. protect you from any That's radiation good. at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Angie, you want to ask a question? That was my question, Derek, because finally <laughs> Phil is speaking my language in terms of frequencies and water yeah. and, oh, lovely. And, and electro. So if, we, if we drink the water next week, Angie, come and get your water done, because if we drink well, the right well, water, well, we should be all right. Okay, well, I was listening to you because that was my first question. You know, that was my 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 resistance towards the watch. Yes. Um, because also with the phone and and things like that so yeah. um yeah yeah so Good. but I, i've got a, a wearable um which is not yet well it's not yet ready for market but we've tested it over a number of years now and it's like a you know a lanyard that you put around yeah. your neck yeah. when you go to a meeting yeah so in that inside that lanyard i've got um 23 different rare earth and uh, minerals and uh, some some of them are two and a half million years old um i've got a lining of silver um which conducts uh, uh frequencies and electricity um and what you what you what you do is you wear that around your neck and that forms a shield a protective shield around your whole body um, so you won't be affected by these electromagnetic frequencies, but that's something for another day. And yeah. also, one of the things yeah. I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lot of testing with the watch um, before and after wearing uh, that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So that when that's ready, um, we can all look at our watches and and have a look and see what difference that makes. It's good to have real science science based evidence as opposed to people just saying. Things. Yeah, I d I don't do um, anything that is not yeah. scientifically validated, okay. and um, I've lectured. I'm not trying to um, blow my own trumpet here, but I've lectured all around the world at some of the world's largest uh, medical conferences, and I've actually um, lectured to over a thousand GPs in the. Uh, in the UK mm. now, yeah, and I work with a lot of GPs and scientists, but I have to say, they know what they know. Mm. They don't know much more out of their narrow. Yeah, we, and I have we, to we say, know that. They, they have we a narrow that. field of we vision. It's all about GP drugs. is general practice as well. So mm. I know that because when I specialised in eating habits and things like that, my GP didn't even even know what half the things were. So. Yeah. No. It's understandable, and even dietitians don't understand. No, they don't. The they, they don't. No, and I've only come to learn that as I've become more and more interested in it. Frank, uh, Michael, you wanted to say something, and then I'll have a, um, Wayne. Hi, Phil. Hi. Oh, Michael. <laughs> How are you? I just wanted to say, basically, all the electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation around us makes our own innate electric being incoherent yes 
and what the, the water does is make it coherent. Okay, well, but, so yeah. the difference between normal light, a diode, or a laser. This makes this laser. Mm. So our energy cuts through all of the static that we're surrounded by, because you mm -hmm. can't go anywhere without it. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. Jump in a car, the radio, the television, yeah. Yeah. the mobile phone, yeah. Wi-Fi. I could go on, but <laughs> if you're if you're down the rabbit hole, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what we're trying to do is make our energy coherent. Mm. So, you know, we become stronger because we're coherent. Yes. It's like pouring water into a bucket of sand. You know, before you couldn't make a sand castle, but then you can make something that will stand for a whole day. Okay. Very well, thank very you. well put, uh, Michael. Thank yes, you've, you've thank summed you, it very eloquently. It's just a shame about the Welsh accent. <laughs> hey, well, no, he's well, got well, a perfect well, accent. He just lives in Wales. <laughs> no, uh, Wayne, you want to ask something? Uh, yes, I just wanted to ask, um, what function on the um, the watch uh, tells you what the water content is, the water? The BIA function. BIA. The BIA. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what I just, I'll just mention this because when you um, put your finger and thumb on either side of the watch, above and below, because the, yeah. the, the case is two electrodes, okay? So yeah. what you may find is that if you don't get a reading, then just lick your finger and yeah. thumb <laughs> and, and wet them, and that will actually um, help uh, transmit the information into the in, in, so the watch can pick up those uh, uh, those energies from the uh, from your from your body. Um, but it's yeah. very impressive. But uh, it is really, really. Yeah, impressive. I, I was impressed. I didn't understand it all, but I was impressed with what it had on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now the other, that I, I, tells I, us a bit more, we understand a bit more. Yeah. I did mention <laughs> aortic pulse wave velocity. So when you go on to um, the the uh, uh, let me just call it up the function. Where are we? The function. Come on, let me get. Have a look. Right. So when you look at the um, APG, all right, uh, that's the um, acceleration photoplasmography. I use a photoplasmograph on the finger to get a lot of information. Um, but interestingly, I said that my uh, arteries operate um, like somebody in their 30s, 35 roughly, as what I get. And so I was also very interested to see the APG function on on the on the uh, on, on the um, uh, watch, and uh, and, uh, and of course I'm absolutely over the moon because it took years to develop that technology, and I uh, I I, um, I now see you know now you've got it in a watch for goodness sake, uh, but the great news was that my result um, and I'll I'll actually let's go back. My result, which I don't, you probably can't see it on there. Um, hang on. Oh yes, one point five, yeah. Yeah, one point five, yeah. Which is which is number one, excellent on the on the report, and that actually tallies with um, my original um, database uh, from St Thomas's. Um, uh, so I, you know, that actually blew me away. The fact that it's come out. And validated, you know, the system that I originally developed to 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 having this on a watch and giving me the same result. So um, just gives right. me confidence that the accuracy of the watch is bloody good. Excuse my French. Very good. Good. That's good to know. And uh, obviously, this is recorded, so people will know from the recording if they want to share that that this is what yeah that the watch is able to give us. So thanks, Phil. Thanks, great. John. Uh, no, great, thanks, great everybody. presentation today. And uh, next week, guys, uh, I'll be writing up about it as well. Bring your water and your partner yep. <laughs> so, so that we can energize your water. So, or just if you haven't got a partner, pull someone in off the street. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so presumably once you've energized this water, this water can then be used in larger amounts to 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 energize other water is yeah. that the idea yeah what what you do you can energize a small amount of water 
But so, for example, if you've energized, say, 250 mil or 500 mil of water, a little mm -hmm. water bottle, um, if you then have a big water container, a little bit of the energized water changes all of the water instantly in the big container. It's, it's absolutely miracle. Miracle That's stuff. Great. That's great. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to have you doing a doing a monthly one then. <laughs> so yeah. Keep yeah. yeah, that's right. Keep everybody everybody Sounds good. Just um, can, yeah. if I could ask uh, Phil just a quick question, Derek. Sure. Yeah, you mentioned the APG there. Every single <laughs> one of my functions measures, no problem at all. But for some reason, over right. the past few days, APG is saying weak signal. Oh. Just wondering why that is. That's the only function mm. that's given me a hard time. I mm. had that last week. Remember? I know, probably not. But I asked exactly the same question last week. And I did it again while we were listening, and it measured. So just hang in there, you know, clean the watch, whatever, lick your fingers. Just yeah. hang in there because it measures for a couple of days, and then and then it sometimes doesn't measure. Maybe, yeah. I, I don't and know. All, and also, oh, it's, think... worth, it's worth actually switching the watch off and resetting it. Right. So that's a good way. Of I, I also think the con connectivity uh, is right. is key, and that's why it's just useful to and wet your fingers. fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's yeah. good. Uh, and good, and good, I'm good super thing. super happy about this this discussion now because I do play with energies and consciousness in my house, Fantastic. and my ECW uh, W is extracellular water is reading just four points four percent above ideal. Right. So um, it's good to have that confirmation that this watch is actually good. Yes. And yeah. um, I'm doing the right thing. So love yeah. it, love it, love Wonderful. it. <laughs> Wonderful. That's great news. Michael, Michael, last question. Yeah, sorry, you're muted at the moment. Hello. Can I ask you uh, a question? The, the readings are also affected by atmospheric pressure. Mm. So last week when it was, as Bill said, bloody cold, Okay, right. The air was extremely dry. Yes. So if you're if it's cold, dry, and your hands are cold, yep. you don't get really good readings. Mm -hmm. And so your circulation have... slows down as well. So yeah, so yep. you'll you'll get really poor readings if you're in somewhere where it's cold. Yeah. And the air is extremely dry, like it has been across the last week, depending on where you are in the country. So you have to get yourself warm. Yeah. And the air has to be have enough moisture contact. That's why you've got to moisten your fingers. Yeah. Very good point, okay. uh, Michael. Good question. Okay. Lars, you want to ask a question? Yes, uh, I have um, come in contact with a device called IT from a company called Itera Care. Yes. Is that something you are uh, familiar with, uh, Phil? Um, I generally try and look at any device that um, makes claims that may um, <laughs> interfere with what I'm doing. 